hello everyone. I have been reading these stories for a while, and I had an encounter a few weeks ago that I thought was worthy of this sub. I'll put some info about myself first. I'm a female, mid-twenties, about 5'7", and 130 pounds. I'm not exactly tiny, but I'm not big either. I work overnights at the airport, from 8pm until 4.15am, and I use the train to get from where I park to where I work. Usually I don't feel unsafe, because I only have to go to one stop, to the parking garage employees use, and at that time, the train is usually pretty crowded with employees going to and from work. This morning, however, my husband was supposed to be picking me up, but he overslept, so I had decided to ride the train to a bus stop 20 minutes down the line, then take the bus to the stop closest to my house and walk from there, about two miles away. Anyway, the train was fairly crowded when I first boarded. As I sat down near the back, I noticed a scraggly young guy chatting up some of the flight attendants who got on a few doors down. By scraggly, I mean he had long, dirty hair and a dirty beard, and even though he had dark skin, I could tell his hands were very dirty too. Since all kinds of people work at the airport, I assumed the guy worked for the same airline they did, as a mechanic or baggage handler, which would explain the dirty hands, and knew them, so I didn't pay much attention beyond a first glance. I popped my headphones in, and pulled out a book, and started to read. The train pulled into the next stop, and all the airport employees got off. As the train pulled away though, I looked up and realized the train was entirely empty, except for me and the scraggly man. This wouldn't normally have been a problem, except that he was blatantly staring at me. Not just a few glances, but staring, wide-eyed and open-mouthed. I got extremely uncomfortable, but since I was at one end of the train and he was at the other, I tried to go back to reading and hoped he would just confine his weirdness to staring and nothing more. He didn't. As soon as I looked away, he started moving towards me. He stopped at the end of my row of seats, turned towards me, gripping the overhead bar, and stared some more. I kept trying not to look at him, because I was afraid that eye contact would be interpreted as an invitation to do more than stare. He sat down in the row across from the aisle, then got up and moved to the seat directly behind me. I still refused to look at him, but he must have leaned in really close to me, because I could feel his breath moving my hair. Then, I felt his finger lightly run down the side of my neck. I'm not ashamed to admit I nearly pissed myself and jerked violently away. Over my music, I heard him hiss like a snake. That's when I decided I was probably a few seconds away from getting raped, stabbed, or both. The train was nearing another stop, so I quickly made a plan. I got a tight grip on all my stuff, and as soon as the doors opened, I shot out of my seat, out of the door, and booked it into the second car. I peeked out the window to see if he had followed me. To my horror... I saw him leaning out the door of the first car, looking up and down the dark, deserted station. Thankfully, he must not have seen me get into the second car, because I saw him stomp his foot, mouth move, and pull back into the train as the door closed. I'm not a lip reader, but it was pretty easy to see what he had said before he ducked inside. Fucking cunt. By the time the train got to the bus station, my increasingly panicked phone calls had woken my husband up, and he met me there in the car. I have no idea if the scraggly guy intended to get off at the bus station, but I'm glad I didn't have to find out by enduring a bus ride with him. Since this happened, I realized how utterly defenseless I would have been if he had gone beyond staring in a very light finger touch. 
I enrolled in Muay Thai kickboxing. I'm only a few weeks in, but by now, I can throw a pretty mean jab-right-hook combo. To start, let me give just a bit of background for context. I am a female, age 20, attending a university in the city about 45 minutes away from my suburban town, and I commute back and forth by train. Also been happily taken for five years now. Back in February, I was doing as I always did for three days a week, around 2.30 in the afternoon waiting at the station for the train. I walked up to the platform, out of breath from climbing 50-odd steps to get up there, and stood over by one of those freestanding platform advertisements and leaned up against it to rest. There was some larger guy, looking not too much older than myself, wearing a long black peacoat and dark pants standing nearby, but I didn't take much note. Suddenly, he smashes his hand up against the billboard, as if he fell into it. I glanced over at him, and he immediately said, Sorry, in a surprisingly light, creepy, Michael Jackson-sounding voice for a guy his size. He was roughly 220 pounds, and about 5'7 or 5'8. Something seemed peculiar about that action that he just did on the advertisement. It almost looked like he intentionally banged into the billboard to get my attention. It looked pretty stupid out of my peripheral vision, and didn't sit right with me. That segued us into chatting while waiting for the train. Bear in mind that this entire interaction happened in only a span of five minutes, because I make sure I walk myself to the train with only little time to spare, so I'm not just hanging around the station after school. The area doesn't have the best reputation for safety and low crime. Anyway, so this guy bothered me right off the bat, but I couldn't quite put a finger on what about him that I didn't like just yet. I like to give people a chance before I form solid opinions on them. I figured maybe I'd make a friend at the train station so I'm not always by myself. So the train arrives shortly after, and I get on with him following closely behind me. Not anything abnormal when the train arrives. Everyone just piles on top of each other to board the train. There weren't any empty seats for the both of us, so I sat next to someone else. He sat behind me with someone else as well. I kept my head down in my phone and played some games and listened to music like I normally do, and I was content. I didn't want to be bothered with keeping myself spun around in my seat the whole ride to talk to him. Even when the train emptied out, we're the last stop, he kept sitting where he was. When we arrived, I got up, pulled out my headphones, and he just says, Candy Crush? So I happily nod and tell him that I'm addicted to playing it. Normal chatter, but a bit unnerving that he was peering over the seats to look at what I was doing. Not too abnormal though, I guess. So we get off the train and walk back to wherever each of us parked. We're chatting, and he says, So I see you go to school on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I always see you at the station in the morning and afternoon. Huh, I thought. Weird. Never once during our interaction so far have I told him that I went to school on these specific days. Hell, I didn't even tell him I went to school. Some people at that station don't necessarily attend my school, even though the station is right by campus. So I just said, yeah, I do. Still lighthearted, because I figured, well, it can't be that hard to deduce that I'm a student, with my backpack and casual clothes and all. Also, I wasn't as creeped out by him knowing the days I went to school, until I thought back on it later. When we got to a row of cars in the parking lot, I said something like this. Well, here's where I parked. It was nice meeting you. And then he just replies, Wait, I parked there too. So we walked together, and now it was a bit awkward since I expected to part ways. Then I get back to my car 
and he gets back to his. His car is right next to mine. What are the chances of that? It's a rather large parking lot for a train station as well. He was in an old red Monte Carlo, and he bragged about it to me. I acted impressed, even though I didn't really care much for the car. At this point, I gave him a goodbye, and he gave me a look like he expected a hug, even though we had just met. I just stuck out my hand, shook his, and went on my way. The next day comes. I believe it was a Friday after meeting him on a Wednesday. This time, I managed to grab a seat with him on the train coming home from school. We conversed, but the entire conversation felt so forced. I wasn't enjoying anything he was saying, but I forced myself to agree anyway. He talked about how he's the life of the party when he plays blues on the guitar, and how he works at McDonald's. Anyways, he was definitely trying to impress me throughout the conversation. The eye contact was odd too. I'd glance away quickly, and he'd just keep staring at me. Who knows what he was thinking. I wasn't happy at all with how I felt after that conversation. I can't be friends with someone if I don't enjoy talking to them. So I got up and walked off the train with him. Yet again, we walked back to our cars, parked right next to each other. By now I was kind of weirded out. Was this guy watching me? I sure felt that way. This time, before parting... He asked for my number. I said nicely, Hmm, how about Facebook? Do you have that? I guess I can add you on there. I'm pretty smooth. I was hoping he'd get some sort of hint from that. I don't typically like to randomly slip into conversation that I have a boyfriend, so I figured he'd add me on Facebook and see my relationship status and all. So the weekend comes and I mull over how much I didn't like encountering this guy at the train station. I asked my friends for advice, told them everything, and they said to drop him. So what did I plan to do? Avoid him, of course, while also keeping my guard up and seeing what he did. Monday comes, and I'm back where I was. Walking up to the platform, I see no sign of him at first. I walk further down on the platform and tuck myself into a space between two freestanding station billboards and try to keep my head down. Moments later, I'm tapped on the shoulder. It's him. I give a simple nod and board the train. I knew he was right behind me. Luckily on the train, we got split between the conductor then I get a message on my phone from my Facebook Messenger app. Sorry, got caught up with the conductor. I replied, no problem, I just wanted to listen to music by myself today anyway, and left it at that. When I get to my stop, I'm pretty nervous at this point to make that two minute walk back to my car. I call up my boyfriend just to make myself look busy as I got off, and to have him on the line in case of something. I'm walking to my car now, being pretty sneaky about how I walk to it, weaving in and out of rows of cars. Then, out of my peripherals, I see him following me, even though I was taking the most inconvenient paths possible. He was on my tail, and it was pretty clear I was using a phone. My voice got a little more distant, and my boyfriend asked what was wrong. Finally. The guy catches up to me, and we cross paths, so I randomly decide to say babe mid-conversation to my boyfriend on the phone, hoping this guy would hear and back off like, okay, she's probably talking to her boyfriend, I'll leave her be. Nope. He's still following me. Finally, I sped walked back to my car, and this time he was parked in a different spot, and different row from me. I got in my car and drove home. I'm not a particularly paranoid person, and it was the first time someone actually creeped me out to the point of me having to put real thought into ways to avoid this guy. After the phone incident, 
I continued to avoid him for another two weeks. Finally, while trying to remain once again inconspicuous at the station, I see a shadow next to me, but I keep my eyes on my phone. Then, he bends down and waves his large hand up at me to get my attention. I looked up. He asked me where I've been, and says that it's been two weeks, as if he was keeping track. I told him, You know, I realized I prefer to be by myself at the station, just listening to music and all. Sorry. He gave the most ridiculous scowl I've ever seen on a human, gave a quick, okay, and walked off. Problem solved, or so I thought. When I arrived back at the parking lot, I went to my car without hardly a worry now. I didn't rush as much this time, pulled out of the parking lot, and made my way home. When I was about five minutes away from my house, I see an old red car speeding in the opposite direction. It was that classic Monte Carlo, and the driver looked pretty familiar. My heart's racing by this point. My gut told me it was him. I wondered why he might be driving around there. I knew his town was not in this direction at all. Was he looking for me in my car? He knew the general direction I went in to get home, because his car was behind mine when we pulled out of the station every day. That scared the living hell out of me, and I hoped to never, ever see him in that stupid car ever again. Luckily, I didn't. Today, I'll still see him out of the corners of my eye, looming around by the top of the stairs to the train station platform. When I walk past, I feel his eyes on me. But he doesn't come over, and he doesn't speak to me. So for now, I feel safe. Here's some background information. I live about an hour and a half away from my boyfriend. I have a public transit pass, so I frequently ride the train to and from his house. When I leave, I tend to take the latest train possible. I've met my fair share of creeps, but not once have I ever been as shaken up because of someone before than I am now. I'm a short girl, obviously a bit out of shape but I don't look like some weak, helpless girl. I've never had any trouble with telling someone to fuck off, so this experience made me all the more rattled up. So the actual encounter. I'm sitting in the middle of this double-decker train at a little table where most people tend to set up their laptops. I like the tables because I actually have a place to put my shit. I'm jamming out to my favorite band, Radiohead, when this man boards the train and sits directly in front of me. I found this very strange because the entire train is nearly empty because of the hour. To top it off, this guy will not stop staring at me. Normally, like I said before, I would tell this guy to fuck off, but for some reason, I had trouble mustering up the words and courage. So I decide to move seats but not too far because I was near my stop and didn't want to travel to another carriage. I move, but this guy stays where he first sat across from me and still refuses to look away. His eyes were determined and menacing, so I was really nervous. I tried my best to avoid his gaze, but even in the reflection of the window, I could still see him watching me. We near what I mistook as my stop, and walk down the small staircase to the exit doors. I realized suddenly that this was the wrong stop, the one before mine, so I just take a seat near the exit, which is another table seat. I turn my head and guess who's a few seats sitting back? Creeper dude. He's still watching me. At this point, I'm genuinely scared so I reach into my purse and take out my mace. I set it on the table very obviously and look him dead in the eye, letting him know that I meant business. This guy didn't even flinch. 
and made no effort into making himself appear less creepy. I hold the mace in my hand again and look away. I'm fearful because we're the only two on the train, which is uncommon for me to usually be alone. We near my stop at last, and I was uber relieved to see a man on the other side of the carriage near the other exit. As the train starts to slow, I get up and approach the man. I quietly ask him to stand with me at the stop and check if the creepy man got off as well, because I feared he was going to follow me. The man agreed, and I was so thankful I nearly cried right then and there. I look back to the creepy man and see he's still watching, and now standing as if he were going to exit as well. I exit the train and the nice man stands with me, watching the doors until the train leaves. The creepy guy, thankfully, didn't exit as I expected him to. I thank the nice man and start walking to my car. I start bawling and shaking like a goddamn baby, thinking about what could have happened if we were the only two on the train. I'm so grateful for that guy and my mace. On a side note, I've been reading this subreddit for quite some time now, and it was the reason I decided to take my mace with me everywhere. I feel like all these odd haunting stories have kept me safer, and for that, I'm also truly grateful. Hey, what's up guys? Blue Spooky here, as always. I just wanted to thank you guys for watching, especially if you made it this far to the end. I also want to really apologize for not having posted anything really for the last uh, about one and a half weeks. Uh, I was fairly sick, and it was messing up with my nose and my throat in such a way that every time I tried to record it sounded like I was trying my best to do a Steve Roku impression, which is not very scary. So I decided to just... Uh, not record for a bit and let my voice rest up so that I could get some more content out for you guys at a more steady pace once it healed up. And um, now it's back to normal. So thank you guys for being patient with me. Uh, I really am sorry that I haven't been able to get anything out. Uh, I know that's probably pretty disappointing, but you know, what can you do sometimes? Uh, if you guys liked the video, please feel free to leave a comment below and perhaps leave a like on the video if you feel so inclined. If you have any stories that you'd like me to read, or any personal stories that you'd like to send in, links to all of my social media will be in the description below. And this includes my Facebook, Twitter, and Gmail accounts. So feel free to shoot a message on any of those, and I'll try to respond as quickly as possible. If you do decide to send in a story, please feel free to put in the tagline what sort of story it is if it has a specific theme, and how you would like me to credit you for the story. If you have any constructive criticism, please feel free to leave it in the comments below, as I'm always looking for new ways to improve the channel. In addition to this, I've also maybe received some complaints that the volume of the videos was too low, so I went ahead and upped the volume a little bit. So for those of you who said the volume is too low, uh, please let me know if it sounds alright now, or if it's a little too loud or still a little bit too low. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day.